Hello, hello, hello! This is Eli here from Tree Fall Studios, bringing you a brand new developer commentary. Uh, this is the first episode that I will be doing in this short mini series where we're going to be taking a look at Maze Pedestal of Trials, which is a spin off of the original Maze game. It is not a traditional sequel as in it's using most of the same type of assets from the first game uh, but there will be new abilities and all the levels are brand new so it's technically like a one and a half jump there will be a maze 2 which will be all new graphics all new everything um, farther down the line with bigger levels more levels and that type of thing uh, this is a spin-off that i worked on a few years ago and I am just now grabbing it to go ahead and finish up the port. Uh, so I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm showing you a little bit of the engine screen. You can see uh, the FPS running here. You can see some of the Unity screen running here. And uh, this is, as of this recording, uh, this is just after the launch of the Perplexing Orb 2. The game came out yesterday. And I've been working on this game for about a week. Um, a little bit of background, this game was starting to be developed on the Wii U after the original Wii U version of Maze. So I remastered Maze for PS4 in which I updated the character controller, I updated the graphics, I updated the effects, I changed some of the levels, I did a ton of things. Uh, I changed a lot of the art, how menus worked, how the pause works, all of that. I did all of that to the original Maze project after I worked on this game last. So this game was a little bit better in terms of quality than the original Maze on Wii U, but not as good as the quality of the game on the PS4. Uh, so this is like a weird in-between project that I need to go back and also upgrade just like I did for the game on the PS, for the original game on the PS4. Uh, so there's a ton of stuff that's broken, materials that are broken, models that have to be changed, uh, all sorts of stuff going on. I just wanted to show you a quick glimpse at the progress I made after about a week of getting it running on the PlayStation version and uh, show you a little bit about the hub world and the overall game. And I'm gonna be taking a look at in-depth levels uh, and how I'm going to be taking a look at changing those levels uh, in the next couple of episodes but for this one I'm just going to focus on this game show you the depth of the spinoff and show you a few things like that uh, so you can see originally you know this game had a few cool changes like I redid the way that the signs spoke to you, the new images and stuff like that. You can see that there's like particle effects, like dust effects in the sky and things like that. And all, overall the lighting was a little bit better uh, than the original one on the Wii U. But as you can already see, this lighting and these textures don't look as good as they do on the PS4. So all of these will be upgraded as well. You can see this still has the old sign from the Wii U version. There is a new sign with multiple animations and random animations on the PS4 version. Uh, I will be changing that out for the new signs as well. So you can see that this game is a smaller game. Uh, it's got 11 or 12 levels, I believe. Uh, right here you can see you're supposed to complete 10 and then return to him, which unlocks the secret final level. And I think I might throw in one extra bonus level, but I'm not sure. So you can see that these levels were much more complicated than the original maze um, game on the Wii U, which are the same levels for the PS4. The PS4 has updated levels, um, but overall I would say the design and layout of this spinoff is still better and more unique than the remaster on the PS4. So when I'm done cleaning this game up and editing it for the PS4, giving it better graphics, fixing all the broken issues, doing things like that, I think overall, even though this game is shorter, it's got some pretty unique levels that will make it maybe better than the 
uh, what people remember of the levels from the first game. So you can see right here, this is the first one. It's split up into the seasons, uh, kind of like the seasons maze in the first maze game. Although this has an entire maze for each season, which is pretty cool. And then uh, you can see that there's a little path around in here. This is the uh, second maze, <coughs> excuse me. And this, this game has a cool feature where most of the mazes have a unique uh, type of thing to them, a neat, unique puzzle element to each one or an environmental element, which is, you know, the first maze game had some of that when you got to the different worlds, but mostly, you know, like for world one, most of the mazes were just the same theme and you just found your way through the maze. This game has less levels, but more variety in the levels. This maze is all in the dark and you can see all these glowing lines here that outline each section. As you traverse the sections for this level, you actually light them up which is uh, similar, this is based off of the lights bonus level for the original Perplexing Orb game, which is on the Wii U and the PS4. This is the third maze here. This one is super cool, another metal maze. Uh, this is also the same texture set from the original maze game. Uh, but this one you can see has a little bit of some differences. There's colored metal blocks in this one. And the cool thing about this one is there's a ton of switches, colored switches, and you basically press each switch and the doors for each color will lower and raise back. So you have to figure out your way through this maze, hitting switches, finding uh, the right switches in the newfound parts of the maze to try to get to the end. It's uh, much more complicated than anything in the original maze game, and this is the third one. Then we have maze four, which is just a regular plain maze, just like the original maze game had. But as you can see, this one is just massive. One of my favorite looking ones for sure when you're looking at the overview. I mean, it's just really cool. Uh, very typical uh, type of design for a maze if you were looking at one top down. Uh, let's see over here. This was the pitter pot stage, which was I don't understand. I can't remember my thinking. I think when I was originally making this, pitter pot wasn't going to be in the first maze, but then it got included anyways. So this is still going to be a bonus stage. I think I'm still going to have it to be a pitter pot bonus stage, uh, kind of hinting at our future pitter pot title, which will be coming around the corner soon. Uh, but you can see the preview is gone because I deleted it because it was the one that actually was featured in the first maze game on Wii U and PS4. And this time it'll be a brand new maze just featured on Pitter Pot. This is broken completely. <laughs> you can see uh, this. I edited this model already to try to fix some of the texture stretching and make the bricks look a little bit better. If you've catched any of these devlogs for this game originally, I think I was working on this in like 2017, uh, even before Pitter Pot on the PS4 came out, because uh, this was originally a Wii U title and then it was shelved. This is the um, uh, Chinese themed maze with the uh, bamboo and the cool bricks and those pagodas and everything like that. That um, was one of my favorite levels. It's the same texture set from the original maze game. One of my favorite themed levels from that game, but this one's a little bit more complicated and the bamboo jumping and stuff is much more complicated than the original. So that one's pretty cool. Uh, gotta fix it, obviously, it's all broken. Then this was redone twice, I think, before posting anything, um, you know, years ago. But uh, this is one of the desert sets. Uh, definitely just a standard maze. I have some cool things in this, like lights and stuff. Uh, but this was based off the pyramid maze um, from the original game. So I would definitely say the pyramid is cooler than this one. And uh, But this one is still, you know, a unique new maze for this game. Then what you have to do is you have to jump across these. 
had to cut out a little bit of the footage there because I had some emails appear on the middle of my devlog. So what you have to do is you jump across these uh, platforms here and to get to the rest of the levels, which is pretty cool. I find this hub world to be small and concise, but I really like the design overall of what I've done in this world. Uh, I really liked it back then in 2017 and it's not going to change. I'm going to keep it just like this because it is a smaller game and a spinoff game. You don't have to go exploring huge hub worlds to get to all the levels, but um, I think overall it fits this vibe and is much cooler than some of the hub worlds in the original game. This has got to be one of the coolest mazes I've ever designed. This is a giant pyramid, and as you can see, it's using the checker texture set from the original maze game. And uh, this has one, two, three, four, five, basically five levels, and then six levels just at the top. So you basically have to solve your way up each level of this maze. Super cool. This is actually moving over there. This is now going to be maze 9 and there's going to be a new maze 8 and then this is going to be maze 10. Also super cool. Definitely designs like this were extremely difficult to make. Like I remember working really hard in weeks and weeks to make stuff like this happen, especially all the texturing of this. Um, it was very complicated. But uh, yeah, that's another reason why I just didn't want to let this project go to the dust um, and just never come out because there were a lot of really unique level designs and really unique uh, mazes for this game that I want to go ahead and get out on the PlayStation 4 and uh, PlayStation 5 and let everybody check it out. I also think that this game might come out on the PlayStation Vita depending on our funding campaign and if we get enough money to get the dev kits and do all of that type of thing. Uh, this is a giant tower, multiple levels. You gotta solve your way to a specific elevator on each floor, get to the very top to win. And then this will be the 10th maze. Uh, the model is actually gone here as well. Um, but there's another one that's kind of like this tower one over here, but uh, it's a little bit different. It's another vertical maze and it has multiple floors, but you have a little bit of inside hallway type of things to solve. So yeah, that is the current state of Maze Pedestal of Trials, and this is going to be coming out on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5, uh, possibly the PS Vita. Let me know in the comments below if you are still interested in seeing Vita games come out from our studio. We got a massive outpouring of support on Twitter. Um, hundreds of people said that they were going to support us if we opened up a Kickstarter campaign in order to release games on the PS Vita. So if you're part of the Vita Island, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of this game. If you enjoyed the first maze game, let me know what you think, how this is turning out. Uh, I mean, this is in a complete broken state. Um, porting, I've had to change engines uh, on this, and that's why a lot of things are broken. It was in way too old of an engine to even uh, be published currently. Uh, so there's a lot of things that got to get fixed there. There's a lot of just broken textures that have got to get fixed. A lot of models that need to be changed. A lot of music that needs to be changed. A lot of code. I just deleted so much code. All the loading screen code, all the pause, all the character code. All that had to be dumped. And uh, I got to do a lot of it over. Still got to do a lot of it from scratch. All of the UI code all has to be done from scratch. So all of that stuff I will be updating you on over the next few episodes as I frantically work to do my best at upgrading this experience to matching the graphics and fidelity of the Maze remaster on the PS4 and then outperforming it in terms of graphics. I'll have a little bit of things I want to try to do to make this game, even though it's using the same textures, look a little bit better, feel a little bit better. Um, so you realize you are getting a sequel, even though it's still a one and a half type sequel. It's not a full jump, but this is a complete new game. And uh, just let me know in the comments below if you liked any of this video. Uh, let me know what your favorite maze overview looks to be. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed to see more game development behind the scenes content like this. I also teach new game developers different skills that it takes to become a game developer on my channel. So if you're interested in learning about all aspects of game development, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Alright guys, without further ado, I'll catch you in the next video.